Hi, today is July 20th, 2024, and here are my poems for the day. The first one is poem number 1118 for the year, More Morning This Morning. Today I mourn the death of Candle Cafe West. It was one of my favorite restaurants, but it is long gone. It died in 2019, faulty gas pipes. I walked past its old location yesterday and was astonished to see that its corpse is still there, abandoned for five years. And let me also mourn Bob Newhart, whose mannerisms and comedic approach were a huge inspiration to me and who was the main reason my first major in college was psychology. I will probably never be a psychologist, but I try to help people when I can. And I will probably never eat at Candle Cafe West again, but there is a candle on 3rd and 28th Street, and I'm probably moving pretty close to there. I know not when, but soon. So I'm both mourning this morning and not. Poem number 1119, Heart Song. He had a song in his heart, and she did not. So his heart sang its song to hers until her heart learned it and sang it back to him. He had a hole in his heart, and she filled it with the song, and his heart was filled. And so both of their hearts were filled with the song. Their hearts sang the song over and over, the same song over and over. It might sound terribly boring, but it was terribly not boring. It was terribly not boring at all. Poem number 1120 of Cox. He was surrounded by a circle of severed cocks. He fell into a burning ring of cocks. When he died, he imagined he'd be an angel at the pearly gates, wearing a halo of cocks. He carried a longbow with a quiver of cocks. He felt as though he was protected and insulated by a shield of cocks. He wore his cock on his sleeve, and his shirt was made of cocks. Everywhere he went, it was an endless procession of cocks. He couldn't remember the last time he had been anywhere close to any female genitalia of any kind. It was as if he was perpetually drowning in one unbounded ocean of cocks. He didn't think there was anything gay about any of this, but some would beg to differ. Poem number 1121, To-Do List. It would be good if every morning I made a to-do list to remind me to make a to-do list. Poem number 1122, Nicholas Rarick. Yesterday I looked at paintings by Nicholas Rarick. I don't have a goddamn fucking thing to say about them except that I really, really liked them. I am attempting to embed the experience in my mind so that I don't forget it. But I probably will have to do more than this. Perhaps I will return to the Nicholas Rarick Museum soon, or perhaps I will remember Rarick without doing that, or perhaps I won't. Poem number 1123, Glen of Indiana. I heard a quote last night. When I do good, I feel good. When I do bad, I feel bad. And that's my religion. In Herndon's Lincoln, The True Story of a Great Life, Lincoln attributes this quote to an old man named Glen in Indiana. I am attempting to embed this quote in my mind so that I don't forget it. This is the second time I have repeated it today, and it is not yet noon. Actually, now it is noon, but... Poem number 1124, Like Nothing. They wanted to give them something, but they felt that they had nothing. So they tried to give them all of their nothing, but no matter how much nothing that they gave to them, they found that they still had just as much nothing as they had had before they began giving the nothing to them. And the gift was like nothing they had ever given, and the gift was like nothing they had ever received. All right, that's it. I forgot to say this is the last poem of the day, but it was. That was the last poem of the day, and I'm done, and I appreciate you.